Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're going to be installing or flashing DDWRT onto your old router. DDWRT is a software firmware that you can use to replace the stock software firmware on your old router. DDWRT is developed by an open source community, so with that, you're going to get a lot of support and you'll also get enhanced security and more updates that provide better capabilities than you would get with your stock router. Flashing DDWT onto your router may pose some risks. In this case, doing so will likely void your warranty, but also you could brick your router, which means it can become unusable. There are ways around this and you can also prevent it, but if you do get into this, then you could go ahead and follow the links in the description below in order to fix it. DDWT cannot be flashed onto all routers, so I recommend you look in their database with your router name and router model to see if it's eligible. In this video, I'm going to be using a Linksys E1200. I've used it in quite a few videos in the past and it's served me well. You can check them out in the video description below. Lastly, if you don't like DDWRT, you can flash it back to stock firmware. But in order to do that, you're going to need the stock firmware and you can download that from the manufacturer's website. In reverting it back to stock firmware, you'll also likely have to follow a different flashing method, and that depends on your router that you use. So with my router, it may be different than your router, and I recommend researching it more in DDWRT. This video is going to be specific to the Linksys E1200 I'm using, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, I'd like to show you how you can check if your router is compatible with DDWRT. We're going to do that by looking at the DDWRT router database where you can search your name and model of your router and if something shows up, it's compatible and if not, then it's likely not and you'll have to use a different router. So to start, I'm going to search my router which is the Linksys E1200 as you can see here, the trusty one that I've used in quite a few videos. Linksys E1200 and you see here we have two revisions that show up. I know that my revision is the second version as I've checked the settings in the bottom of it that shows it. And now that we're here, we see four different flash versions. The first two are the factory flash and the second two are the mega. The difference is, is with the factory flash, that is the base install of DDWRT and then the mega is the upgrade install. We will only be needing two of these files for this and you can see the instructions by checking the wiki here, which I'll open now. So in this wiki, we have some flashing instructions and then we have some other information such as recovering from management mode or reverting to stock firmware, which I'll go over. The flashing instructions are fairly simple. First, we're going to use the factory flash K2.6 mini, which they recommend uh, in order to do the base install. Then they recommend the K3X version, the mega version, to do the upgrade install. But first, in order to do that, we're going to hardline into our Cisco Linksys E1200 router. They recommend doing that as you can't do it wirelessly. And once you're connected with that, then you go to the router interface, which in this case will be 192.168.1.1. Go to the firmware upgrade page and then upload the mini or the factory flash. Then from there, the router will flash and do a reboot. You wanna wait a couple minutes to five minutes just to be sure this process happens. And then it should reconnect once it starts back up and then you'll get the DDWT router interface. Then from there, you're gonna to have to log in with default credentials, which is root and admin in this case. And then you can go to the firmware upgrade page in DDWRT and then upload the mega version. Then again, it'll do the flash and reboot. And at that point, you should be up and ready to start using the updated version. So let's go ahead and first check reverting to stock firmware. The last thing you wanna know is how to do this 30, 30, 30 hard reset they talk about. It's very easy. All you have to do is press the reset button for 30 seconds while it's on, and then at the 30 second mark, remove the power and still hold it for 30 seconds. Then you plug the power back in while still holding the reset button for another 30 seconds, and then you can let go of the reset button. This just clears the NVRAM and prepares it for the flashing to revert back to stock firmware. So let's go ahead and look at our router now. So we have 19HTTP 192.168.1.1. 1 
and you can see it takes us to the factory settings page. I've reset it to factory settings because it's easier to work with in my opinion, but if you haven't done that, that's not crucial. So we're gonna go ahead and connect with an unsecured network, which we can forget about because we're gonna do that later. The default credentials here are username admin and password is admin. We can forget about that and also forget about this. In order to get to the firmware upgrade page, we click administration and we click firmware upgrade. Here is where we upload the first factory flash. We click choose file here. Then we click our mini version, which we can see that is correct. And we do choose for upload. And then at this point, we can start the upgrade. But just a word to note before you continue, if you weren't able to get to this page, you may have had some IP conflicts with your existing network. So I do recommend disconnecting from your existing wireless or other networks you're on, just so that you don't have any IP conflicts. And then once you get to this page, you can go ahead and upload and start the upgrade. This process is gonna take a little bit of time and we're gonna see it do some things in the back end and then tell us that it's rebooting. So until then, I'll just mention the next steps that we're going to get to. If you do not see that your router comes back up after a reboot, you may get a self-assigned IP address. This happens from time to time and all you'll need to do is unplug the router and plug it back in to kind of refresh it. And I would only do that after waiting five minutes just to be sure you're not disturbing this flashing or upgrade process. And now you can see it says a system reboot is going and may take up to 80 seconds. And I would ignore the 80 seconds and wait for a few minutes. Then in our network settings, we should eventually see it reconnect using the same network of 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.254. And then at that point, you know you're connected and ready to get into DDWRT. It looks like on my end, I can see that it's reconnected. So now I should be ready to get in. But first, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to clear my history and my cookies. This is because the default password will store itself in the browser, and I wanna show you exactly how it starts from scratch. So I'm gonna delete the trailing spaces here or the trailing URL. We'll click enter, and then you see we're at the interface page. Now in order to proceed, we're gonna to go to the administration and firmware upgrade page in order to do the mega version or the upgrade where you have more DDWRT features. So here we'll click administration, and this is what I was talking about. Now you get the page to log in. Here we can just type in root for the username and admin for the password. Now we click log in and it lets us in. Next we click to firmware upgrade. Here I choose the option to reset to default settings. You don't have to do this because I haven't changed anything, but I like to do that. Next, we're gonna make sure we're using the K3.x mega version, as you can see here. So we go ahead and then choose for upload, and then we're gonna click upgrade. Now you're gonna see this upgrade wheel happening and basically everything pauses for a while while it's upgrading in the background. Eventually this screen will change over to an upgrade screen where it's showing you that the upgrade is taking place. At this point, you just wanna continue waiting until you see that your router disconnects and then reconnects. Again, if you do get a self-assigned IP address after you've waited for so long, the best course of action around this is to unplug the router and then re-plug in the router. And then at that point, it should freshen up and give you an IP address so that you can connect back to your router. And just to be sure I'm clear, what I mean by unplugging it is disconnecting it from the power so that it actually shuts off. And as you can see, it says upgrade successful, unit is rebooting, so please wait a moment. This is just doing all its backend work. This screen will also change again, where then it's gonna show you that it's finished and then you can click continue. Like I said before, continue may not actually work because you may not get a new IP address. And that's the point where you will want to shut it off and turn it back on. So as you can see now, it says it's successful as it did before, but now we got more options and it says to continue. You can see these, what it says right here, but I wouldn't concern yourself with that. If you go ahead and click continue, in my case, it's not actually gonna take me to the next page. And that's because I can see in my network, I have a self-assigned IP address. So at that point, if it doesn't continue or you know that you have a self-assigned IP address, then at this point, it's safe to turn off and then turn back on. Then after unplugging and plugging it back in, the router, if you wait on that same page, will come up with the interface 
and you'll see that you can change your username and password to new credentials. I highly recommend doing this and making sure you create something that's secure. So for my router admin name, I'm going to choose admin for the username. Then for the password, I'm going to just choose something arbitrary for this video. Once we click change password and continue, you can see we get into the interface and we are ready to now use DDWRT. And in order to continue, you see that you're provided with a password prompt. Here, we just use the credentials we just defined. And now we can freely move upon the router. Now next, we're going to do a factory reset to the stock firmware. Again, you can see the instructions in order how to do that. And we're going to be going over that next by first doing the 30-30-30 hard reset. On this router, you have a reset button on the bottom, which we will do that 30 seconds holding down, 30 seconds unplugged while holding it down, and then 30 seconds still holding down while we plug it back in. Depending on your router, this process may be different. But for the Linksys ones that I have, this is the process. If you have an ARM router or I think an ASUS, the instructions say you may have to do some things differently, which you can see in that 30-30-30 hard reset page. So I've gone ahead and done the 30-30-30 hard reset. And during that process, I did get a self-assigned IP address where I wouldn't be able to connect. So at that point, I just unplugged it and plugged it back in to refresh it. Now I will go back to the main page. And as you can see, it's taken me to the interface page where I will just go ahead and type in my username and password to define once more. Click change password, and then I can proceed forward. I'd also like to note during this process, I've had mixed reactions from the router. So sometimes I get to this page, but there was one time I actually got to a maintenance mode page where it asks me to upload a firmware for upgrading. That's okay, both should be suitable. Just note that if you're in the maintenance mode, you only have 20 seconds to actually upload the stock firmware and start the reset. If you don't do it within that time frame, the router just stops responding. So if that happens, all you'll have to do is do a reboot of the router so you can get back to that page and then do it within 20 seconds so that you can actually start the reset process. So for me, again, I'm going to go to administration and then the firmware upgrade page. Here, I'll just click reset to default settings. That's not going to matter. Now I'll choose my file. And here it's going to be the stock firmware. We do choose for upload. And then we click upgrade. Now here, you're going to see a very similar process as we saw before. It's going to be almost exactly the same. The difference is now it's going to be changing it back to the stock firmware. Then after the router resets, what we'll do next is do another 30-30-30 hard reset as they recommend in their instructions. And then after that 30-30-30 hard reset, we should be back at the admin interface for the stock firmware. Now, once I've done the 30-30-30 hard reset, we have gotten to this page before I did that where it says upgrade successful. I see that I'm connected to the router and now all I'll have to do is just delete this upgrade CGI. And you can see we're back at the stock interface for the Linksys router. And that about covers it for this video. Next, if you want to learn how to configure the router, I would recommend looking at the next video that I'm going to do where I show you how to configure a DDWRT router. Thanks again for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content or other content around IT tools and technologies, especially around networking, firewalls, etc., go ahead and follow my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Now lastly, would you use the extra features in DDWRT? Would you even flash your router to begin with? Leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to answer it. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.